thank you if you are watching into yet another informative edition of your program this is agricultural new directions agribusiness and i am wazanae manure today we are going to be witnessing the youth awards in agriculture being spearheaded by the youth desk in the ministry of lands agriculture fisheries water and road development right here in zimbabwe and these awards are being held under the mantra celebrating agricultural transformation through youth participation during covid 19 and post covid 19 pandemic we are going to be having a lot of farmers a lot of youthful faces being awarded certain uh, awards according to their activities in their geographical locations we have those who are undertaking piggery cotton production maize production wheat production and all others that are taking part along the various uh, parts of the value chain here in zimbabwe stay tuned for more i feel greatly honored to officiate at this third edition of the national young farmer champion awards being held under the theme celebrating agriculture, agricultural transformation through youth participation during and post COVID-19. The youth are an important demographic for this country, much like any other country on the African continent. Therefore, harnessing this youth demography into development in general and agricultural development in particular they have been subjects of studious academic inquiry, but also of practical significance to the development of a country. Youth, youth should therefore perceive agriculture as a business and see it as such. Youth must collectively choose which part of the value chain, must carefully choose which part of the value chain they wish to participate in from ideation to research and development, to transport, to logistics, to marketing, to value addition, to services provision. This third National Champion Farmer Awards is aimed at recognizing those young farmers who have chosen and excelled in the production part of the value chain. In the Second Republic, and as directed by the President, His Excellency Dr. Idi Munangadwa, during the National Youth Convention held in Kadoma on 27 November 2019, all government ministries have to have functional youth desks. In this regard, my ministry has a fully fledged and vibrant youth desk to assist youth in agriculture. The government has created an enabling environment for youth to thrive and prosper as businesswomen and businessmen in agriculture. First, government created, and only in March 2020, and for the first time in the history of the land reform program, a youth quota in the allocation of land, so you get at least 20% of the allocations. Government will be bringing 3,000 tractor units and more than 300 combine harvesters by July 2022, and therefore, youths ought to take advantage of this enabling environment by the government. Let me pause and just uh, touch on an aspect that uh, was referred to earlier, perhaps two points. The first is the pricing of inputs, chemicals, fertilizers, seed, and we've engaged and aged the private sector to be reasonable with their pricing. Many of them access foreign currency on the auction system administered by the RBZ at the official exchange rate. We therefore have requested them to present a more critical and detailed analysis of their costing structure so that government can also understand the major cost drivers in their costing. As a farmer, you ought not to worry about the fluctuations in the input prices. Because as we price the commodities next year, we'll take in all that into consideration and pay you fair. <laughs> Your focus, therefore, ought to be production, productivity, and more productivity. Whatever the youths are doing out there is being recognized People are watching what you are doing. We are seeing what you are doing. 
hence the special day today where you are being honored for your um, performance. Honorable Minister, let me say, as an industry, we are fully aware of the government uh, programs and vision, that is the NDS-1, as well as the Vision 2030. And we are, therefore, in full support of all the government uh, projects and the vision. We are running with it, and uh, as we are running with it, we want to see that the people of Zimbabwe, as the government is saying, no one is going to be left behind. We also make sure that no one is left behind from the uh, agro industry. We have to make sure we, do, we run with everybody. We give you the full support so that you achieve the NDS-1 and you also achieve the 2030 vision. Recently, Honorable Minister Rana Metropolitan Province was among some of the provinces who distributed input for the Pumbuza program into us. And thousands of households benefited from this program, marking the beginning of a social contract between His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Dr. E. D. Mnangagwa, and every household. We expect many households to be food, for food secure in the upcoming season. The agro-processing industry, Honorable Minister, in our province and the nation at large continues to grow tremendously, creating thousands of jobs upstream and downstream. We have seen many young entrepreneurs, Honorable Minister, venturing into agro-processing. Honorable Minister, allow me this opportunity to appeal to the Ministry of Land, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Road Development to continue the great job of encouraging the growing and processing of our own foods locally by Zimbabweans and for Zimbabweans. viewers for staying tuned to agriculture on new directions agribusiness we are in the second segment of your program now viewers we encourage you to participate in agricultural activities because you don't necessarily have to own land to be participating in agriculture or to start farming on that note viewers we encourage you to be a part of these conversations feel free to get in touch with me the producer wazanae manure it's on 0772 Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are also available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness110. Make a follow-up on this episode and more. And leave your comments and suggestions. They are very welcome to us on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are going to continue with the speeches from our podium. Stay tuned. We do appreciate the recognition that young farmers are being given in this country. The opportunities are vast, the opportunities are available, and we can see this. Even the support that is coming from the Ministry of Agriculture, of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Development, the, through the various programs that have been rolled out, particularly this year, the strategies, I can't even name them, how many they are. Honorable Minister, we see the efforts that are coming. It's entirely up to the young people, entirely up to the population, the citizens of Zimbabwe, to take advantage of the terrain that has been opened for us. I would also want to mention that young farmers, young people, are venturing into agriculture, and they are doing wonders in that area, which in that domain which was uh, previously locked because of the reasons that we all know about. Even after independence, our young people didn't see much value in agriculture that like they are now, understanding that we can create opportunities, we can create our own employment, and we can employ other people in agriculture. Coming up as innovative, young people inventing in some cases some of the services, products 
that agriculture uses on a daily basis to make life in agriculture a lot easier. We see in the area of ICTs, our young people coming up with applications that are helping in farm management, that are making the drudgery in agriculture to disappear and bring with it the joys of reaping good returns. Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. At this point in time, I am joined by Dr. Jota Mdondofema. He is the Director of Agriculture Education in the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Road Development right here in Zimbabwe. First of all, Dr. Mdondofema, I would like to thank you for steering the event in the right direction and holding it together. You were our Master of Ceremonies today. Yes, thank you, Wata. Yes. Now, as we get into our discussion, in your capacity as the Director of Agriculture Education, I understand that you have strategies in place to ensure that information is disseminated to each and every citizen in Zimbabwe, especially the youth, in terms of encouraging them to participate in agriculture, doing it sustainably and profitability. Can you maybe outline some of those strategies that you have so that you are also reach out to Tatenda in Bocha Marange there? We are here in Harare, but we also have farmers in Mount Darwin, some in Jipani, some in uh, as far as the younger. What are your strategies, th those that you have in place to ensure that no one is left behind? Thank you very much, Wadza and viewers. As indicated or highlighted earlier on during the Youth Awards, the Department of Agricultural Education houses the youth desk for the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Resettlement. With the dictates spelled out in the NDS 1, we have also taken on board the agenda to leave no one behind yes. and no place behind. And we are strengthening our youth wing by taking them on board. If we have youth participating, we know we have got a future or a better tomorrow. In terms of getting to every corner and improve on youth participation, we have capacity building workshops. Yes. Our youth desk is moving around with other sister departments in the ministry trying to encourage the youths to participate in agriculture as a business and these capacity building workshops. We have some lectures, we have sessions, we have workshops which can go for one day or two where those youths whom we have trained will be left in those wards or districts sharing the information with others so that it can be cascaded. The other strategy is Sister Waza. Yes. We are also having some areas which we can reach online. We have also developed online courses or sessions where we are going to talk to the youths, where we are going to encourage the youths, where we are going to get the youths participate in agriculture, in agriculture as a business, so that we move together with the youths in the transformative journey in terms of agricultural production, productivity, and profitability. Apart from the two strategies, Wadza, we have also created some fora okay. where our youth desk, Comrade Kanchengo, chief coordinator, moves around in the province where we have provincial youth coordinating representatives who will also move around the whole country with our programs coordinator, sharing information, sharing various programs which we have in terms of educating the youths and encouraging them to love agriculture, yes. to practice agriculture, to participate in agriculture. So that by the end of the day, we want to bring up a competitive mode within the youths so that by the end of the day, they can measure their contribution to the development of the national economy through their participation in agriculture. On that note, we are going to go on a short commercial break. Stay tuned.
Thank you, viewers, for staying tuned to Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness. We are here in the third and final segment where we are having the awards, the Youth Awards, Champion Farmer Awards here at the uh, Harare Exhibition Park. At this point in time, I've taken the liberty of inviting Mr. F.B. Wengai. He is the Deputy Director, Agriculture Education in the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural De uh, Development right here in Zimbabwe. Mr. Wengai, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Yes, you are in the department where education, agricultural education is being uh, marketed and pushed forward uh, in terms of having youth participate. Can you maybe give us a brief background of your activities and how you see them enhancing agricultural production, aligning it to the youth? Thank you so much. Um, we have seen the growth of the youth dividend yes. in the country and uh, as a department we have developed a new curriculum that has got uh, five pillars, uh, looking at training, um, advisory and business advisory services, research, innovation, and uh, uh, entrepreneurship development. Okay. What we are looking at is uh, empowering the youth in all these facets of uh, uh, knowledge acquisition. So that they are able to, when they leave college, they are able to start their own businesses. They are not only going to be employers, em employees, but employers themselves. Okay. They are going to create employment for other people, for other youths. And that is the way we are now focusing our education. Okay. Finally, Mr. Wengai, you interact with the youths and uh, you are seeing the trends. How has it been in terms of uh, agricultural uptake? How is the participation? Has the youth mindset shifted from, uh, you know, maybe getting uh, support from their parents into wanting to become individual business owners? How has it been like in the spheres in agriculture? The demand is quite overwhelming. Okay. Uh, we are even having a large demand from the women uh, the campus. Yes. Whereby we used to think that agriculture is only for men, but now the demand for agricultural places at colleges is so overwhelming that women have taken the lead. Okay. Women have taken the lead. Thank you so much, Mr. Wenga. It was a pleasure having you with us today. You're, you're welcome. And at this point in time, I am joined by Mr. Paul Zakaria. He's the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Farmers Union right here in Zimbabwe. Mr. Zakaria, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yes. Uh, today we were witnessing the awarding of youth in agriculture. They were being awarded for their toil and their hard labor and their work. I want us to talk about the high cost of production in Zimbabwe, looking mainly at inputs. You would find that our farmers are always raising complaints about issues surrounding high cost of production, mainly fertilizer. As I was roaming around Zimbabwe, uh, Harare, uh, this past a few weeks, I realized that a certain company was charging 93 US dollars for top dressing. Is that realistic? And how can government intervene to ensure that the farmers are protected? Because this is a business. You cannot spend all of your money in acquiring inputs. And when it comes to selling, you get nothing. That's not profitable. Your sentiments on that? Of course, this is an issue of uh, great concern yes. to the farming community. Our farmers, uh, they rely very much on the local, the local suppliers. And, uh, and in, in most cases, then they become, they get, uh, you know, exposed and yes. at the mercy of their local suppliers. And this is uh, unreasonable, very unreasonable. The situation is untenable and the situation also calls for serious, serious consideration from very, very high levels to then say, how can we make the business of agriculture sensible? Okay. How can farmers predict? How can they plan? Because if they, if farmers have no control, absolute no control over the spiraling costs of production, then it simply means that they are running loss, you know, into losses yes. at the end of the season. So we really would like to call upon the authorities to work together with the farmers' organizations and all the key players in the value chain to say where do we draw the line. Because you will see that the, the, the prices that you are talking about of inputs, yes. they are increasing on a weekly basis, even in US dollars. And one would want to say, what are the variables? What are these things that have been considered 
for prices to increase? What are the cost drivers for our uh, local manufacturers or even for our traders? Very true. So we see some inputs being imported into the country, others from South Africa, from Zambia, and we know the cost in, in Zambia. But then, <laughs> A hundred percent one How do you That's, arrive at 93 US dollars for a bag of top that dressing? That is profiteering. Yes. That is profiteering and that has to be controlled. And we are not calling for price controls. Yes. We are simply saying profiteering must be controlled. And that is a very strong message that will help our farmers to remain in business for a very, very long time and also to go back into production in the next season. Thank you so much, Mr. Zagaria. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Finally, viewers, as we round off our segment, at this point in time, I am joined by the Chief Coordinator in the Youth Desk of the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural uh, Development, Mr. Nikros Kajengo. Mr. Kajengo, thank you for joining us today. Welcome. Great to see you all. Yes, this award ceremony, I understand that it was spearheaded by the Ministry of Agriculture, but you work as the Chief Coordinator in the Youth Desk. I want you to tell us a brief background of these awards. Why do you hold them year in, year out. I understand that last year we were at the same event at the Botica Botanical Gardens where one farmer was awarded and several farmers are being given awards, being the champion farmers, the pest setters in our agricultural industry, specifically the youth. A brief background of this setup. What do you intend to achieve by holding awards year in, year out? Thank you very much. It has been known that Zimbabwe is an agro-based economy yes. and our country is not isopotic as David Waff says. So each and every region has got its own activities that support livelihoods. Now in the year 2019, his excellent president, Comrade Idim Nangagwa, launched this program and he directed this to be an annual event where we recognize, appreciate the good work being done by the young people in the agricultural fraternity. So actually, we are here to celebrate the work of the young people. We want to promote competition. We want to promote a spirit of production that leads to productivity. And of course, if one is productive, definitely results in profitability. So yes. here we are talking about an agribusiness. So that is the essence of the program. Finally, Chief NK, your word of advice to the youths. Some might be looking at there from home saying, I could have uh, been a winner. I could have won the award. Or what can you say to our farming community, the youth, in terms of undertaking agriculture as a noble profession, instead of just looking up to their parents or ending up getting into drug abuse or alcoholism? Your word of advice as we, as run, as we round off. Thank you. Uh, my advice is very clear. It's just an exhortation. They have to take notes from the speech of our minister yes. when he said that uh, the president, his excellent comrade, Idim Nangako, is going to launch a, a very important program that is going to empower our young people so that they are employers of their own. They are going to be employers, creating employment for others and themselves. So this is my advice. So they must take advantage of the environment that is favorable for production, favorable you know, for agricultural activities by the young people that has been created by the Second Republic. Our offices is available. We are there for the young people. Thank you so much, Chief NK. There you had it, viewers. Chief NK here was telling us that uh, our youth need to take advantage of the prevailing environment. There are calls from our government to be productive and to produce. From me, your host was Zanae Manyore. I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manyore. And Mukoma Dani Daniel Mranganwa. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.